morning, hey. brother. How tired are you? Bro, new level. <laughs> new level tired. Are you going to be able to drive to jujitsu? I'll be able to drive. I don't know if I'll be able to fight, but I'll be able to drive. <laughs> So I'm exhausted, but uh, still made it here. I don't know how intense it's gonna be, but just made it here is the most important part. And in today's video, we're actually gonna be talking about when to prioritize sleep versus when to prioritize training and sort of how to know which one is right for you. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> I'm very lucky today is just drilling and not fighting. I'm so tired. All right, just finished training. How do you feel? I feel better than I did when I when I got here, I feel really more energized. It's one of the things I like about jujitsu is like, it gets your brain going. Like, so it's even though like, yeah, it's exercise, like just the brain aspect of it, learning something, putting the pieces together. So on like a little high right now, I'm sure it'll come down pretty quick, but I feel good. Are you ready for a nap? Uh, Maybe a I, nap with the baby later? I would love that. I would absolutely love that, yeah. Even if I wasn't, I would love to just lie down and get the, get the baby snugs. <laughs> So we got some uh, zen basil seeds for some fiber. And then I uh, took some frozen berries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, heated them up in the microwave. And then I got some grape nut flakes. Just put it all in a bowl. It smells pretty good. I don't know if you can smell that. Um, and it's just like a big fiber bomb to start the day. So it's nice. The, uh, the basil seeds are sort of like chia seeds. They're, they don't really taste that great if you just have them by himself. So I've been mixing them with different things and I like having the, the grape nut flakes because also good fiber but also just crunchy. It is my wife's idea to put those in. So uh, that's how I've been starting the day. All right, so as you know, I am exhausted right now and that's sort of gonna be the theme of this video. Like I'm not gonna try and pretend I'm not tired just to make a video, right? I'm super tired, just showing you, as, showing you me as I am and a number of people have wanted to know why I'm still training instead of sleeping. And they've asked me this on my Instagram Q and A's, like why not just get that extra sleep? And Mitch behind the camera, who's fucking amazing, his link uh, to his social media is in the description of this video. He was asking me like, what are sort of the identifying factors that tell you whether you should work out or whether you should sleep? And this isn't really gonna be a scientific answer. The first and foremost thing that I have to discuss is I've been training for almost 20 years now. I've been doing this for a pretty long time. So 
I have a very good idea of where my limit is. And I think a lot of a lot of times in fitness and in health and in life in general, but especially in the fitness health world, we talk about finding balance, right? Like we want to find balance. But I think the only way to find your balance is to go through periods of time in which you're unbalanced. Like sort of like to you have to push to the extremes to know where your middle ground is, or else how do you know that it's balanced, right? And so for me, the number one thing is I've done this for so long, I just know, like I can feel it internally. And I know this doesn't really help you per se because maybe you can't feel it yet, but I can feel when I'm so tired, that's like, hey, I just need to sleep versus when I'm tired, but I can still train. And the way that I sort of frame it in my mind is I think about how I'll feel when the workout is over. If I know that after the workout, I will feel like shit, then I'll sleep. But if I know that after I do some exercise, I'll feel better, then I'm gonna go do it. And this is again something you have to practice, something that I've spent many, many, many years learning how to do, but there's a certain level of tired that I know if I go to the gym and work out, I will feel even worse when the workout is over. Versus there's other levels of tired where I know where I'm really tired right now, but when I'm done working out, I'm gonna feel even better. And so I sort of have to judge by how I feel, will I feel worse or will I feel better? For me, anytime I work out, I want to feel better when the workout is over. If I will not feel better, maybe there's an injury, maybe there's it's because I'm exhausted, whatever it is, if I know after the workout I'm not going to feel better, I'll rest. Otherwise, I'll go. Now, having said all of that, I've got a full day of work, so I'm gonna go do a podcast right now. Yo. What's up, Jordan? How's it going, man? How are you, man? Good, there's my buddy, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Hey. Justin, good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. You know, I, I've been pulling back on work. You know, I've been doing a lot less work. I'm hanging out more with my baby, and just before this, I was feeding her, and I'm taking late night, late night feeding shifts so that my wife can get a little bit more sleep, and uh, just like more family, you know? It's basically it, family time, and I get my workouts in, and I work a couple hours a day, and uh, you know, my office is right downstairs from my from my apartment, so it's, it's in the same building, so anything, if my wife needs me, she can call, and. I can go right up if she needs me, but like, it's a lot of family time, you know? And I think um, I spent a lot, many, many years focusing on the grind and the hustle and, and just work, 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 which I don't regret it, it was amazing. But that was in my 20s and now in my early 30s and looking forward in the future towards building a family, it's like, I don't, I don't need more followers. I don't need more money. I don't need to grind. Like I would rather spend my time with my family and my friends. And um, if I can make my wife's life easier by staying up late and me getting a little bit less sleep, I'll do that. If I get to, if I have to cancel a podcast or post less on Instagram so that I can snuggle with my daughter, like great, that's fine. I'm okay with that now. So very different mindset than than ten years ago. But that's what my life looks like right now. All right, so just went upstairs. Upstairs. Fuck, I'm so tired, bro. <laughs> Let's keep that in. <laughs> All right, blooper, keep it in the video. Just went upstairs, showered, fresh shave, cut my head. I was just telling my mom, my mom is here. I think my head is misshapen because almost every single time I shave, I nick the exact same spot. So I got that Band-Aid here. Um, we're gonna work out in a little bit. Gonna answer the Instagram questions that we do in every video after this section. So make sure you watch the whole video. If you're liking it so far, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already. Um, in this section, I wanna talk about a very common question I've been getting, especially now that I have a baby and I'm not getting as much sleep. People are asking, what is more important, sleep or working out? And this is a sort of a, a mouthful to discuss. First, I wanna discuss the principle of this type of question. What's more important, this or that? It's not mutually exclusive. It's not like one is definitively more important than the other. They are both, I would say, 
equally important. You need to make sure that you are doing your best to get enough high quality sleep and you need to make sure you're exercising. Period, end of story. You need to be doing both. Now, you're gonna have different seasons of life, just like right now. I'm in a season of life in which my sleep will definitively be limited, not by anything that I could change or do, but simply because I've got, at this point, like an 11 day old infant who needs to be fed every two to three hours. And so I'm taking turns with my wife, and making sure I'm feeding that baby. Um, that being said, and this is where I think I'm gonna get in a little bit of tough love, I think a lot of people are missing out on sleep and then subsequently missing their workouts because they're just not making the right choices, right? It's like a lot of people ask me, oh, I'm just so tired, da, da, da. And I'm like, well, when did you go to bed? Two in the morning, why? I was on TikTok. What the fuck are you doing on TikTok at two in the morning? Like, get off. And so this is where I think a lot of people, are, they find it easy to, to create justifications and excuses for themselves not to work out because they're tired, but there are lifestyle changes you can make in your life to help you not be as tired, simply by going to bed earlier, making your room nice and dark, making it a little bit cool in your room, maybe getting some blackout curtains or blackout shades, or if you can't afford those, get a little thing to put over your eye that like they have on the airplane, or cover your face with a, a shirt. I've done that before. Like if I was out sleeping somewhere and I didn't have blackout curtains, like I would just take a shirt cover my eyes and I go to bed and then it's easier for me to go to sleep. But get the fuck off your phone. Stop scrolling Instagram, stop going through comments, stop going through TikTok, put the phone down and go to bed. I think this is so, 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 so important because when this question comes in, what's more important, sleep or working out? I've just found most people, they're not not sleeping for a good reason. It's usually just because their, their lifestyle factors, their behaviors are not conducive to a good night's sleep on a consistent basis. So if you're not working out because you're going out drinking with your friends and you're partying all the time or you're staying up late on TikTok or on Instagram or you're watching movies or whatever the fuck you're doing, you're an adult. And if you're not an adult, I don't know why you're watching this video in the first place. It's very odd, like welcome, but if you're watching this video, odds are you're an adult. Get your shit in order. Go to bed so you have enough energy to get a workout in. Now, um, how much sleep do I need to make sure I can get a good workout in? People for the entire history of, human, of humans have been able to be active and move without necessarily optimal sleep, right? Sleep is very, very important. You need to sleep, I would say, try for seven to nine hours a night. I'm not getting that right now, but I'm still training because I need to exercise, not just for my physical health, but my mental health too. But you need to do both. Ideally shoot for seven to nine hours. If you can do that, you're gonna be able to get really good workouts in, you're gonna be able to be consistent. You don't need to work out every single day. You do need to sleep every single day, but not every day you sleep is gonna be an amazing night of sleep, and that's okay. Just because it wasn't the optimal sleep doesn't mean you can't still move, doesn't mean you can't work out, doesn't mean you can't get your steps in, doesn't mean you can't do something, can't get a stretching session in, can't get a yoga session in, can't get a walking session in, can't get some cardio in, can't get a little bit of strength training in. You don't need to be a, an Olympic level weightlifter. You don't need to do your hardcore powerlifting session. You don't need to hit a personal record. I'm not hitting any personal records right now, but I'm working out, I'm exercising, I'm moving, I'm doing something because I know that's actually gonna help improve my sleep quality later in the night. Even though I'm not gonna get a full eight hours or anywhere close to it, my sleep for the few hours I do get will be better because I'm using my body, because I'm exercising, because I'm exhausting it. If you don't work out and you just sit all day and you're sedentary, you're off and your sleep quality is gonna suffer as a result of that. So it plays into each other. It's not one or the other, it's both. So when it comes down to it, how do you know which one you need? Like I spoke about earlier, you really gotta figure out, okay, if you're doing everything right and you're still exhausted, you know once the workout is over, like you're not gonna feel better or it's gonna impact, negatively impact your day the next day, go to bed, get some sleep. But if you're doing that every day and that is causing you to not work out at all, you've got some shit to figure out because you need to work out several times a week. You, you just have to make it a priority if health is really important to you. Speaking of which, now I gotta go get my workout in. It's gonna be a quick strength training workout. You're gonna see it's not any PR, it's not doing anything crazy. Quick, simple, effective, basic strength training. And then after that, gonna answer two Instagram Q&A questions for you. All right, let's get to it. What's your workout? 
All right, so today we've got an upper body pull day with a little bit of core mixed in. Uh, not gonna set any personal records, I'm not going super hard, just getting in here, trying to get a little bit better, and uh, I think Mitch is gonna make a, a nice little workout montage so you can see what I'm doing, but honestly, I'm fucking exhausted, so I'm not gonna go too in detail, but upper body pull with a little bit of arms as well. those after the rows sucks oh. Are you putting away someone else's weights? Always putting people's weights away. I used to belong to a gym where the owner would be like, uh, your mother doesn't fucking work here in Boston. It was like, your mother doesn't fucking work here. Put your fucking weights away. Always putting people's weights away. But it's a good, it's a good way to like get some steps in during my rest period and it is what it is. Are you putting your weights back? I'm putting my weights back. It's a fun, it's weird. It's this weird concept. It's so funny. You know when, do you ever, I'm actually interested, let me know if you do this in the comments. Mitch, do you ever like imagine getting in confrontations with people? Like you're in the shower and out of nowhere, like you just imagine you're like in a confrontation with someone? All the time. A consistent recurring made up confrontation in my head is telling someone to put their weights away and they're like, I'm, I'm always like, hey, are you gonna put your weights away? And they're like, no. And, and then we get in a confrontation about it, like consistently, like this scenario is always playing out in my head. But yeah, it's this weird concept of you use something and you put it back so it's in the right fucking place. All right, now we're gonna answer some Instagram questions. Okay, first question. What is fasted cardio and is it worth it? This is from Rebecca Lynn Hanslick. Really good question, a lot of confusing information on this topic, so I wanna break this down. Fasted cardio is exactly what it sounds like, it's just cardio fasted, right? So it means you haven't eaten anything prior to doing it. Most people will say you should do fasted cardio in the morning once you wake up prior to eating, and that makes the most sense if you're going to do it, right? Um, some people look at fasting as no eating or drinking. That's a stupid idea to do cardio without hydrating yourself. Um, in terms of fasted cardio, the purported benefits, right? The, the benefits that people say exist are accelerated fat loss because your body, instead of using glycogen, or instead of using carbohydrates as fuel, you're relying on stored fat for fuel. And they say, well, that will cause faster fat loss, which seems like it makes sense. It seems like, oh, that makes sense. Like you don't have any carbohydrates in your system. You haven't eaten, so you'll just burn fat. It's not how it works practically. Um, I will say, before I go into the science and explain that it's not how it works, fasted cardio isn't bad. Like if you enjoy it, go for it. For example, I don't eat before I do jujitsu because I do jujitsu in the morning. And the last thing I want is a stomach full of food when I'm rolling around in a very cardiovascular based sport. So if you wake up and do cardio early in the morning and you're not hungry and you'd rather not have a lot of food in your stomach as you're doing cardio, 
that's great. Don't eat, it's fine. But it's important to understand that fasted cardio is not inherently better than unfasted cardio, especially when the goal is fat loss. This is what's important to understand. Many people say that fasted cardio is better for fat loss, and the fact is it's not. It's not worse, it's just not better. It's even, I'm gonna explain why. So going back to what I said earlier, people will say that because you have no food in your system, because you're not, you don't have any carbs, you're not using carbs for fuel, you're relying on fat. What's important to understand here is there's a huge difference between burning fat for fuel and losing fat from your body. Two different things. When you burn fat for fuel, yes, you're using fat for energy, but what is the main driver of fat loss? What is the only way to lose body fat? to eat in a calorie deficit, to burn more calories than your body takes in, right? So let's say you do fasted cardio, but you're not in a calorie deficit. You're not gonna lose body fat. It doesn't matter if your body is using fat for fuel because at the end of the day, you are still not in a calorie deficit, you're not gonna lose any body fat. Now on the other hand, let's say you don't do fasted cardio, but you do eat in a calorie deficit. You're gonna lose body fat. Now let's say, whether you do fasted cardio or unfasted cardio, at the end of the day, you're in the same net calorie deficit. You will not lose body fat faster simply because you did fasted cardio, because you're in the net same calorie deficit, right? So this is what's important to understand. It's totally fine if you wanna do it. It's totally fine if you don't wanna do it. It is not inherently better. It does not cause faster fat loss. It just might be more comfortable for you. And if it's not comfortable for you, you're like, fuck that, I want to eat before I do cardio, great, go for it. If you want to lose fat, make sure you're eating in a calorie deficit. And if you don't know how many calories you should be eating in order to lose fat, in order to be in a calorie deficit, I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to my free calorie calculator. It's another video here on YouTube. It will show you exactly how to find out how many calories and how much protein you should be eating to lose fat. But either way, fasted cardio, unfasted cardio, doesn't fucking matter, do what you prefer. Okay, question number two. With the new stress of the baby, are you still trying to eat healthy? This is from jarnold066 on Instagram, which by the way, if you want me to answer your question, make sure you follow me on Instagram, Syat Fitness on Instagram. I do Q and A's almost every day, and as you see, I do two, at least two on every YouTube video, and make sure you put your questions in there, and I'll try and answer it on the YouTube video. But with the new stress of the baby, are you still trying to eat healthy? Short answer is yes, absolutely. Longer answer is I'm definitely not just eating healthy, right? Like I am, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we are ordering out a lot more now that the baby's here. Um, my wife loves to cook. She's an amazing cook. Like I, I keep trying to get her to open an Instagram account where she shares her, her cooking and she started a little bit, but now it's a little bit more difficult. Either way, she's a great cook but it's really difficult right now. With very minimal sleep, um, it's very hard. So we're ordering out a lot. <laughs> we're getting sushi, we're getting pizza, we're getting burgers, like we're, we're ordering out a lot because it's just convenient and it's easier to do that. And also, I'm very much uh, um, an experiences type of person and I know that one day, we're gonna look back on the time that we had our daughter and we were just ordering in burgers or ordering in pizza and hanging out with her and eating and enjoying. And I will say, even though we're doing this, like we're still mindful of our portion sizes. Like if we're full, we listen to our body. We don't eat the whole pizza just because we got the whole pizza. If like we have three slices and we're like, you know what, I'm full, cool. We have no problem either storing it for later or throwing it out. Obviously there is like the sort of like moral mindset of me, like I don't wanna throw out this good food, but the reality is I know for my health, I'm okay throwing it away, it's okay. Uh, so that's where we are on that. Uh, we do our best, I make sure I get my big fiber bomb in every single day, like you saw in this video, I get like a, a big fiber filled breakfast early on, I get as much nutrient dense food earlier in the day. We've really been living off of Instacart for our groceries, which has been super helpful. It's one of the benefits of, of uh, living where we live, like we have so many, like people can go do the grocery shopping for us, bring it in, it is more expensive, but it's been worth it for us. So go on Instacart, order some things, people deliver it to the door. So we have a lot of pre-made stuff. We have a lot of, of pre-made things that early on in the day, I sort of try and front load my nutrition so that for dinner, I can be a little bit, have more leeway and uh, 
just have more fun. That being said, uh, one of my inner circle members, Connie, she uh, she always like bakes my wife and I stuff, and so she sends it in these such large quantities. So I've got these like M M&M and M cookies in my freezer down here in the office, and every single day I've been having two cookies as soon as I walk in the door. Like they're delicious, and she just told me she's gonna send us more soon. So listen, my nutrition is nowhere near optimal. It is overall very good, but if I put on a few pounds during this time frame, fine, not a big deal. The cool part is once you know how to lose fat, eating in a calorie deficit, you always know what you need to do. Like putting on a few pounds here, it doesn't make a big difference. It would be completely different if I was 350 pounds, super overweight, like diabetic, and like I needed to get my nutrition in check, that'd be a different story. But because I'm coming from a place of being very healthy, I'm still being very active, the majority of my nutrition is good, if I put on a few pounds, I really don't give a fuck because I know this is one season of my life, it's a very short time period, I wanna enjoy my infant daughter as much as I can while she's as tiny and small as possible, and uh, and then when she gets older and, and we have more time to grocery shop and cook and all that, and I'm like, you know what, maybe I've put on more pounds than I want, I'll get it back and check. But it's, uh, it is overall healthy, but it's not optimal by any means. All right, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, it really does mean the world to me. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. And that's it. I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm exhausted. So I'm gonna get a nap in and uh, I'm gonna stop talking because I don't know what I'm saying. Have a good one, I'll talk to you soon. Like, you know when you're tired and your brain is foggy and like you don't even know what to say? So that's where I am. As you know, I'm exhausted right now. And, oh, hold on, let me start over. <laughs> yeah. For day, still got Mitch behind, hold on, let me start. There we go, okay. My brain is really foggy. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that over again. I'm gonna restart.